Welcome to this introduction to Seed Code Complete. I'd like to show you some of the contact management features here and how easy they are to work with. So let's, uh, let's go over to the contacts layout from our layout menu here. And you can see that we have some simple information about the contact, their name and phone number, and some place for some alternate phone numbers and addresses. And we can see a little bit more of everything by getting that left-hand status bar out of the way, but I kind of like this. You can kind of move that back and forth by just clicking on this area right here and then bringing it back. Um, I like this area over here because it shows us this, this pinned stuff. So we can have a list of pinned contacts. So if I pin Essie here for everybody, you can see that there she is. She shows up in the list. And then I can use this list to navigate from record to record. Um, I've pinned her to everyone right now. I'll undo that. If I were logged in with an account name, then I could pin um, contacts to individual staff members. There's a staff table here. And you can create as many staff records as you want, recording their account names. And then you can kind of have a customized list of pinned contacts for each staff member. And these might be contacts you're using that week or working with on a regular basis, people you always kind of want to have uh, right up here. And obviously, you know, we can email them by just kind of clicking on their email address. So the other thing that's going on here is we have a list of events for this contact. And if I create a new event, I can just put that on the calendar. We'll put in, uh, say, hello. And I can give that a, a staff member. I can say that maybe that's for me and say that, uh, give it a, a status, maybe it's late, and let's just put it in here for 9 a.m. And if I uh, click close, we'll see that this shows up here, but it's also over on the calendar. So let's navigate over to our calendar layout, and we can see that here for 9 a.m. And if I, if I drag that down and kind of reschedule it for noon, that's changed not only here, but we're changing that same record back on Essie's record. So let's go back uh, to our contact, and there it is at 12 noon. And again, this is the same record. We're just looking at this event record through the perspective of SE's contact layout. And uh, earlier we were looking at it through the perspective of the calendar. So the data under the hood is very simple. We just have these two different ways of looking at it. You can see we have a little filter here of milestones and other events. Um, if I click milestones, you'll see that we have a lot of project activity for SE on this ICFD project. And sometimes we want to hide that. We just kind of want to see the other things like phone calls and meetings that are happening. So there's another way that items get on this list here, and that's by um, changing the contact status. So I've previously been playing around with this. Let me just erase her status there. So over on the settings section, we've recorded a number of processes for, the, for projects and for contacts. And one of the contact processes is inquiry response. So when the process runs when the contact status is going to change to inquiry, we're going to create these two items on the calendar and kind of space them out and assign them to different people. So let's click back here in our nav system and see what this looks like. So I'm going to change SE status to inquiry. And I'll say, yeah, I would like to add these events for the contact. Click OK. And now we have two things. I can see that on the 24th, I need to send a response email. That's today. Say, hey. Uh, thanks for your uh, inquiry. And then Bill is going to follow up on the 25th. So these kinds of automated processes, you know, when uh, status changes, I want to do something. This is available in Seed Code Complete both for contacts, also for projects and invoices. And this is the kind of thing that stops items from falling through the cracks in, in, your, in your business. It's one of the real keys to productivity, and it's very easy to configure um, in Seed Code Complete. So one other thing I want to show you is uh, how easy it is to get your contacts in here. Um, we have uh, a simple import utility I'll bring up here. This is just a, a simple flat database with a name, company name, and a place for additional phone numbers and email addresses. Um, and you can just import into this flat file and, and do replaces and do whatever you need to. So you, you'd basically kind of come in here and say file import records. Um, this is the 500 record database from Brian Dunning's site. Click open. You line this stuff up however you can, however you want to. Maybe you do a couple imports, maybe you do some replaces. But once you get the data in here into this simple database, it's pretty easy to just move them over to seed code complete. You just click send contacts. And when we do that, we're going to make new contact records. We're going to make company records if we need to. It understands that some of these people might belong to the same company. And it's going to create the related address and phone number fields that we need. So we'll click OK. And let's see who's our first contact over here. Charity, because um, she had a, this phone number over here. It had a related phone number. So let's find her over here. And you can see that we've created her. We've created a company record for her, uh, created those phone numbers, and even formatted them properly. So it, it really is very easy to get your contacts in here. Um, we'll be putting together some more videos about how contacts work, how projects work. But uh, I hope you've enjoyed this introduction to Seed Code Complete. Please uh, download the demo and take it for a spin. Thanks.